Welcome to your favorite show. It's Analyze This, where we talk about finance and economy for millennials. My name is Hani Ogundei, and joining me is my wonderful co-host, Mr. Shinji Andrews. Shinji, why do you always do that thing? It's, it's, my, it's my signage. It's, it's yeah. your new signature? Yeah. Right, excellent. You just... Yeah. Okay, right. Excellent. <laughs> But today we're going to be talking about something really exciting, which is businesses that you can start for less than 100,000 naira. So the recession is officially over. Tunji told me that, correct? Why Why did you make it sound like I own the recession? It's official, no, 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 no. It's official. The National Bureau of Statistics has said Nigeria grew by 0.55%. Uh, in second quarter of 2017, so we're officially out of the recession. Excellent. So if the National Bureau of Statistics say and Tunji Andrews officially says it, then that means it's official. So now we have already talked about entrepreneurship and how unemployment rate is crazy. It's high in Nigeria. It's high across Africa. Almost like 25 million people out of work at any enter inside the workforce and not able to find a job. So for many people, they would turn to starting a business, right? Mm -hmm. And going down this entrepreneurship path. So we've already talked about the doom and the gloom. But I think today it's time to get it you know, nice and creative and talk about businesses that you can start with a low amount of capital. And maybe um, if you're able to plug the profits back into the business, grow it into a multi-million dollar enterprise. So Tunji, what's your take on this? Have you started a business with like not a lot of like less than a hundred thousand of course? To be honest, I think every business, every single business in the world can be started with less than a hundred thousand naira. And that is if you can So if you're starting a spaceship shuttle Okay, business, yes, I will speak uh, I was, like I was, Elon Musk, you yes, can start it with yes, the less than a yes, hundred thousand. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I'm serious. Now here's I'm, the thing I'm interested. Here's the thing, right? Um Each business has its um, value chain. Right. So there's the manufacturing, uh, uh, there's the service end, mm -hmm. um, there's the basically there's the intermediary uh, space of every particular business. So let's say manufacturing um, cars, for instance. Now, in that part where there are the manufacturers, there are those people who sell the cars, there are those people who repair the cars. So it's a huge value chain. Where you need to plug in in that value chain is where um, the hundred thousand naira comes into uh, comes in, becomes important. So, for instance, if you start at the service end or the sales end of the value chain, mm -hmm. it is easy to enter the business with a hundred thousand, grow your clientele, so you grow your reputation. Car, yeah, I mean, so if you want to sell a car, for instance, there are websites where you can sell. All you need to do is just get across to people who um, have cars for sale. And you get uh, people who want to buy cars, be the middleman, take your small commission, grow your clientele, get you know more referrals, and eventually you'll be able to you know have enough money to buy a car to sell. From there, you grow. It's 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 a gradual process. What I'm trying to say is that it's a process, so you don't think um, hundred thousand naira, we've arrived. Now I have hundred thousand naira in my account. Let's go and start the business. You need to understand that the process is there, mm -hmm. and you grow little by little. I like that was a nice interesting segue how you took us from car manufacturing to just being a carbon salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Very creatively well done. Yeah. Um, but I think what we really want to get down in is like, so if you have a hundred thousand naira in your account today mm -hmm. and you wanted to start a business, what could you like? What are some of the top creative things that you could do? Like for me, I think number one for me is like a digital marketing career. So mm -hmm. digital with the rise of the internet, especially in places like Nigeria, uh, mobile based um, marketing is growing as well, just internet marketing. And there's a real uh, opportunity for people who have, who understand this new marketplace and have digital skills to be able to grow the career in that way. So for example, if you did an online training, which typically are free, um, you could get, you know, Google certified or even Facebook certified. And from there, you could go on to work with small and medium sized businesses, helping them put their businesses online. Uh, you take a small cut out of commission and voila less than a hundred thousand you started yourself a digital marketing agency well that's true because i, I mean uh th that's a service and, yeah. and and really most of the time what you can start with hundred thousand are a service-based businesses where you are offering some sort of service so i would say that the first thing is to like she said learn get certified, you know, get the skill to be able to offer it to someone. And the great thing about the economy in Nigeria right now is that we have a lot of small and medium scale enterprises that can't afford to hire a lot of people in-house. Mm -hmm. So they can't hire accountants, they can hire um, um, graphics people, they can hire PR people, they can hire um, social media marketers. So you can offer that service to them and basically get to run your own back end with them. 
But understand, 100,000 can finish very quickly if you don't spend it properly. Yeah. So you have to understand your business and plug it into the most necessary place. So for instance, you're an uh, internet marketer. You must be able to have access to the internet. Right. That is fundamental. If that you don't have access... It doesn't It doesn't, but I mean, you have to do it over a period of time. You can sign up for like unlimited plans these days. For yeah. Example, for... It's like 5K a month. Um, yeah, I've done one. They had an introductory plan. It was okay, like 5,000 okay. a 5, month. That's and that's then good. it went on to become, I think, around 12,000. So, okay. I mean, you have their considerable runway for a significant amount of time to mm -hmm. be able to at least get the business started. Exactly. But I think what's always interesting to note about this kind of business is that you have to have a natural interest, a natural mm -hmm. flair for it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that people should go and look at sort of some of the ideas that we come up with and be like, oh, I'll just pick one. There I'm has to be one that it. you have a natural affinity for, yeah. right? And one of the interesting stories that always interested me around, like talking about food and agriculture, was a lady I know that's started a pap business so mm. since she started literally from i don't know i think the first pouch was like a thousand naira and then from there selling it on to family and friends remanufacturing mm -hmm. it making you know basically she deals in packaged pap basically everyone mm. you know most nigerians will have pap yeah, or you know yeah. at home but nobody wants to go through the whole hassle of making it themselves so by cutting out you know that hassle for people and by packaging it and making it hygienic and easily available uh just starting like with her family and friends today and she stopped across the country and across the world now mm. so that those are like small things that you you know you don't think about but it might be something just in your home that you could pick up and you could start and you could run with it fantastic also um retail retail in terms of selling um things like clothes uh sh shoes bags whatever the fantastic so thing like about and selling, okay. yeah. yeah. Now the fantastic thing about it is that you can use social media to advertise yeah. these things, and you don't necessarily have to have those items specifically in your own store. You can take pictures of uh, people you know, people you, can, you so trust. There, yeah. Can, you know, produce when you get the orders. Right? Exactly. So, so uh -huh, they I, mean, I think people, a lot of people are doing that, even with creating their own brand. So they they're literally getting access to either starting small with like a tailor that they know, mm -hmm. um, and the tailor manufactures for them. They put the items up on social media and they sure. sell. And when they make a bit more money, they buy a sewing machine. An industrial one these days will cost for you to, between sixty and seventy thousand naira. Mm -hmm. And maybe employ like a tailor who's able to work for you whenever you have the orders, and they. Able to grow and scale the business that way you know a lot of the time see I, I tell people this if you can guarantee any business and i'm talking any business in the world i don't care if it's a bank i don't care if you can guarantee a, any business a particular amount of sales or additional income do you know yeah. and tell them i promised you that i will give you this 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 number of new clients there is no business that is going to turn you down. Right. None at all. If they need the idea is that they will say, okay, we want to test you, so go and do it and let's see. Once you're able to do that, you, you've got a market. I love this whole thing that I learned in Google, is which is really just make a small amount of people really, really happy with your product and it will scale from there. So a lot of times we try to start and make a lot of people feel some kind of way about your product, like maybe care, not like it, but yeah. feel average. But if you can have a small group of people that really, really, really love it, that are fanatic about it, that want focus to go out and tell people about it, focus on those guys, do it really, really well, and your business will go from there and you will be able to scale out from there. Those are like really my sort of key tips that I live for so guys let's know um if you had a hundred thousand naira what kind of business would you start and how did you start your business how much exactly did you use to start it let's take it to the streets we won't wait for a million naira or two million naira if you apply the principles of leveraging with hundred thousand you can start a business i started with fifty six thousand fifty one thousand six hundred I apply the principles of leveraging in modern business model. I didn't apply the conventional way of doing business. So when you apply that, when you apply the leveraging, you leverage on people because power belongs to the people. So when you apply that, definitely your business will grow with over time. Uh, like I'm an engineer now. So right now I'm an automobile. So maybe I should open a workshop then getting some companies to come to my, like you have um, Honda Motors, you have other motors, but right now I'm a valuer with insurance. So I inspect as they for them. So that's what I did. But if I want to go further for my investment, you know, I can easily establish a workshop. You understand? So I can easily establish a workshop. It depends on the kind of business you are doing. If it's a service-based business, 
you can use hundred thousand. Like those days, publishing, photography, soap making. You know, those days. Uh, even now, you can use it to to start it. I we advise agriculture. Cassava farming. Any pardon? A pick of cassava is one hundred twenty thousand, and the duration is one year. And you can get a land. We have a lot of land. The youth do tie and fine clothes will not give you money. Tie and fine dresses will not give you money. Go to that farm and make good. We must consume. You and I must consume three times in a day. What do we consume? If all of us are in the office, well, who will do the farm for us? Our parents are old. You and I are young. Who do, mechanized farming? Who is going to give you mechanized um, uh, machinery that you used to do the farm? So it sounds like everyone has a different opinion about if you can really start a business with 100,000. But I think the most important thing is not to have shame. Like, just to be downright humble, you, as Kendrick Lamar would say. I'm not even sure if it is humble as a thing. Because, I mean, it's at the end of the day, you just always have to put it at the back of your mind that I'm here to make money. Right. I'm not here to show anybody my flashy car, my flashy shirt. It's about making money. Yeah, but I it's, think, I think that's that the bottom business line. and starting a business can really humble you yeah. because you're dealing with things that you don't always control. There's market forces, there's competition, there's customers. So you might have a whole grand idea and a grand plan in your head, but the market will humble you. It will, it like will. One of my favorite stories is uh, a lady who started a moi moi business and she was making cook moi moi and selling it outside her children's, outside the school which she had taught in. Wow. So she had taught in this school for several years and she said, oh, I'm, I'm going to quit and I'm going to do something else. And in the end, the idea that she came up with was, I'm going to sell Moi Moi. Right. So she had to go back to that school to, to sell, sell the Moi Moi outside of school. And everybody was looking at her like, what's wrong with you? What, imagine, what happened like, to you? What happened? What, do you want this job back? You know, like that kind of... You know, also I'm, sure the, I'm sure the principal was have gone and said something like... Sister, you know, but the, also the humbling still here, to serve, it? like maybe like the kids or the parents, yeah. or or maybe it's even you go back to your kids' school. Like, but like I said, but she listen, needs to put it at the back of her mind that I'm here to make money. But she did, and she ended up taking that moi moi all the way to the White House. Wow! So like those are the kind of stories yeah. that are like super inspiring. She started. We don't need you need less than a hundred thousand to start like a moi moi. But it it is it is scary sometimes. I remember um, some. 2007, 2008, I, I was trying to go deliver, I was delivering paintings, right? Mm -hmm. So I was supposed to deliver this painting to uh, the palms in Lekki. Mm -hmm. And I was just, uh, as I was going in to the palms, um, some my, my, my pants caught a, a nail somewhere and ripped all the way down here. Now I had to either think of going back home to change or just going to drop the uh, paintings like that and this is the palms right at the point where it was at its peak so I was thinking you know I just remembered that I had bills to pay I had so the way I strolled in even the lady I'm telling you, even the lady that I went to deliver the paintings to she you know she wanted to, you know when she, somebody's trying to tell you you have a torn part of your clothes but the confidence that you came in with she's not sure whether you know is it style as in she just wasn't sure as in, i just, could see the confusion in her face but i was like no, so yes okay thank you very much because you know? my mind all i was thinking was eh if i don't make this sale i'm done so to you, this is your own humble story that once you oh, tell no, us to sure. talk this is not the humble you to, you I have, I have, to go inside the palms <laughs> no i have had i'm humble, honored to know more you humbling, dear, sir. i have had more humbling stories i will write it in my book one day but the Are general we? truth is i have come to that point where there is really no shame there's nothing. I've been there, done that. And I think the great thing about even like when you're getting experience and when you're starting out in life is to take those jobs that require you not to have any shame. Like one of my first jobs when I was still in university was like selling um, people to be able to have roof renovations. Wow. Yeah. So I had to go up, knock on people's doors and be like, hi, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> looks a bit funny would you like you know and then they had to invite you to their house and i and you i would go to like random areas and just knock on people and be trying and it was lead generation right so if you didn't generate any leads you would walk around like walk around like the israelites so like your leg your shoe would be like flat and after that if you didn't get any lead like if you didn't generate any of the leads you would end up with like maybe zero pounds so in the more complicated days i've convinced someone that their roof needs an assessment and then they would have to get an assessment but it was like 
imagine like you knock on someone's door and you know them or you're like just wondering where you are but those kind of things after having done that then everything for me is like secondary like no, so it prepares you for your the whole bigger, palm story will be it like prepares you for the me. bigger bigger things because yeah. there are so there are those days where you go I mean, then as you climb in, in life, there are places where you go to that you'll be standing literally in front of thousands of people right. and you need to speak to them. Right. And honestly, it is experiences like that Palm story that I was talking about that gives you the experience of, that, you know, when you actually can you be yourself. Onto this palm story. No, when you can be yourself in front of obvious ridicule. Because everybody was... So you know, to, just a little bit of a tone child. No, it was. There are some people that walk around in Lagos wearing short tie things all the time, and people see their tie. Just because your trouser was torn here is not like. No, that's the style of this oh, thing now. Tingy, this is not trousers. Imagine, but, imagine having. Okay, well. No, what, 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 what did you want to imagine? Nah, nah, no, no. Nah. no. Nah. Anyway, back to really like the cocoa of our story, which is. So I think that we come to the conclusion there's like definitely a ton of businesses that you could start with. Basically. But I think it's more about the principles. So I think we talked about a couple of different industries where you definitely can get started with less than, you oh. know, 100,000 Naira. And we focus a lot on, on sort of service industry, sort of mm -hmm. blogging, opportunities in the digital space. Tunu told you about how to be a car boot salesman. Um, I think in Nigeria as well, there's a real big opportunity in like cutting out the middleman and being able to just make things easier. Mm -hmm. So one of these great companies that I actually love is like Twiga in, in Kenya. And basically what the guy does is he goes all the way to the farm to buy bananas and then brings it directly to the city and sells it. And by doing that, he can cut off like the mm -hmm. price and just make it so much cheaper. It's like plantains, right? You buy plantains in Lagos. It's like so expensive. You go and buy it in like Ibadan. That's you it. get like a whole vine for like the same price that you buy five As a here. matter of fact, So those are like said. easy ideas. Like if you have access to, you know, what, what commodities. So I know someone who's doing it, for example, in beans and they're buying beans from, you know, mm -hmm. upper middle belt and they're coming back here and selling exactly. it to Naira. And just by exactly. driving it themselves directly to the market, they cut out this whole my 12 whole sort of middle market and they're able to make money directly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things is just being, um, being able to be creative, being able to start things. I think that one of the biggest things that people don't start like where like you have the idea that you like if you're like me I procrastinate a lot and then you start looking on, for money you start no looking yeah for money sometimes you just give yourself excuses and you can sit on the idea for a while yeah. one of my favorite people that I follow on on Twitter is DJ Anubi this guy he starts like a business a week like today he's talked about I'm starting crayfish tomorrow I'm starting lemonade tomorrow I'm starting and while there's also that conversation about being able to focus on <laughs> one idea you know how I but feel like I like the spirit of just willing yourself to go out there. Have a, a small amount of money and testing out businesses and learning really quickly. So Deji comes back and it's just like, yeah, this that crayfish one wasn't so hot. Uh, <laughs> another day is like, oh, I'm, I'm packaging coconut oil this week. I'm going to send it to Malaysia for them to test. You know, like, but he's starting out all these little micro businesses, and then I'm sure eventually the guy is gonna really hammer and figure out which one is gonna, you know, Work is gonna be him. a success. Yeah. So if you have 20k, maybe it's not you put all your eggs in one basket. Maybe it's okay, 10k. Let me start one first. If I see how that goes, let me start another one. And all the time, being honest with yourself and being uh, and, and I, being willing to learn. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of the money is in the dirty businesses, like you said about which the one banana guy. The banana guy, business. like the people going to the middle belt, bringing things like mm -hmm. uh, oranges mm -hmm. to. Uh, the fruit juice companies yeah. helping them, you know, source for that. Uh, people getting charcoal. Mm -hmm. So it's it's sometimes in the dirty businesses where you go to those, yeah. you know, outskirts uh, places and just roll up your sleeves, you know, roll up your uh, your, your your trousers and get really slightly dirty. Um, I know somebody that used to actually come back to Lagos with the truck of charcoal because um, the drivers used to steal her charcoal. So she will actually sit inside the, the, charcoal, the truck. charcoal truck with them, making sure yeah. that, and whenever they parked, she'll go and stand behind the charcoal truck and just, you know, whenever they are done, she gets back into the right, front again right. and they start driving. So at those points, you know, those are the kind of things some of you might say, eh, how can I do that? But really, she's making a lot of money. Yeah, so I think the most important thing is to start with research. You cannot do enough mm -hmm. research. Immerse yourself in the industry. If possible, get work experience in what you're interested in. But spend a lot of time just observing, learning, making sure that you build a business plan, you get the right, you understand the unit in economics, and then starting. Don't be afraid to start. And don't be afraid of failure. Like, failure is just a lesson disguise. So you learn the lesson and you do it again. All right, guys. So do let us know what you think about it. Are you starting a business soon? Are you Have you started already? What, what, what have been your experiences? Just let us know. The handle is at Ndani TV. The hashtag is Analyze This. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at Tunji Andrews. And also... 
you can reach out to me at Honey Ogunde on all the social media handles. I would love to hear your startup stories. We would love to hear hers too. All right, till next time, guys. Bye.